What's up guys? I got my buddy Steve Basic, an architect out of Boston, who's designing this Texas home. And we thought we'd take a few minutes to talk about Zip R. This is standard zip sheathing that's been bonded to insulation. And we wanna talk about why you might use it, what are the options, and what are some times you might not want to use it as well. Today's build show, Zip R Review. Let's get going. All right, Steve, what are we looking at here? So this is your standard 7 16 zip sheathing. It's got an integrated weather barrier, weather resistive barrier. And if you look really close, it's got what I've termed micro contours. And you can understand what those are about. I did a really good build show video on the wetting of the tape that talks about that. But basically this is your air barrier, it's your structural sheathing, and it's your weather resistive barrier. And this facer, this green facer, is engineered to be the perfect substrate for the zip tape and, of course, liquid flash. But on the back side of this is what we're talking about today, which is zip R, the R meaning R value. And, Steve, what is the R value of this panel? So this is a one-inch poly ISO, so it's roughly R6 is what they, they call it. They also have an R3 panel at half-inch, R9 at inch and a half, and then their two-inch R12 panel. Okay, so the total thickness here, inch and a half. And when you use this for sheathing, which we can see here, we're in the framing stage, no roof yet. That's why we're, uh, we're getting baked by the Texas sun today. But you're seeing the inside of that sheathing, the insulation. And what's the big benefit here, Steve? So the big benefit is, is that your wall is made up of basically three components. You have windows, you have wall framing, and you have what I would call open cavity, right? So the open cavity, that's an easy one. When people say, oh, I have an R30 wall or R21 wall, they're speaking to the insulation value in the open cavity. Mm -hmm. But the wall framing or the opaque area, as I call it, that makes up roughly 20 to 24% of the wall in general. Yep. And it's roughly R1-ish per inch. So yep. you're at R5.5, R6 for every inch and a half stud. So how do you improve that? Well, we put a sweater on the outside and that's what the zip bar sheathing is doing. Yeah, the other thing I wanna point out too, Steve, is we've got a solid header there. It looks like a yep. two by 10, let's say, yep. and you've got a top plate and a plate underneath it. Those do so, have insulation packed inside too. Oh, they do, okay. There's a two inch piece But if you insulation. didn't have insulation there, that's another place that would have very low insulation compared to these cavities. Yep. So when this gets installed, we still get shear value out of the zip sheathing, right? Because yes. it's sandwiched in between. We're probably going to use a slightly longer nail, though. How much embedment do we need on that nail? Yeah, probably about an inch and a half is typically what we're in search of. Okay. So the embedment there, the pullout strength at that is usually satisfactory. So we're able to use a three or a three and a quarter inch nail here. But if we went to a thicker zip R, um, they do make this in a two inch, which is what, R12 maybe? Yeah, well, the overall two inches in R9, the two and a half inches, they're R12 product, which is two inches of foam and the uh, 7 16ths are the zip attached to that. And yeah, that requires much larger fasteners. I've done threes, I, I've done them all, but R12 is the one that probably causes the most headache mm -hmm. of, the, of the four because the fasteners have to get larger. It's just, it's, it's exponentially, you know, a little bit more difficult to solve for. Yeah, it makes sense. Now, one of the things I like about Zip R is that any builder, even a non-high performance builder, knows to just swap out the zip sheathing with the zip R, and then the details are pretty straightforward. They're still nailing it in, they're just using a slightly longer nail. The window install, if it's a flange window, let's say, totally normal, but now we've got this extra layer on the whole outside of the house, but we really didn't make the builder jump through any big hoops. And it, it's it, it's really interesting because a lot of people think innovation is a product, but innovation is a discipline. I learned this from one of my clients who's like at the, at the top of his game in that. So when you think about this, it's not so much the insulation is the idea or the brainer behind it. It's the idea that I'm still only going around the house once. I'm doing exactly what I did if I was putting plywood or OSB on the house, except now I got an additional R6 out of it. Yeah, huge, big deal. Now the opposite, or not the opposite, another option for exterior insulation, which is what I actually did on my personal build, was I used standard zip sheathing, just 7 16 zip right on my studs, and then I went on top of that with two inches of exterior insulation. What are some ways, or, or I should say, what are some places in the country 
that you might opt for that option instead of the zip bar? I mean, everywhere you could probably get away with it. There's products you could put polyiso on the outside, you could put rock wool on the outside, you could put fiberboard on the outside. Mm -hmm. All of these are solutions, but the, the, the issue is, is as an industry, we like to argue like this, you should do this, not that, or you should do option C, not A or B. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is we could do any of those. They all have their pros and cons, right. but more importantly, they all have a set of rules that apply to that system. That's right. So regardless of what system you're putting on, I don't care who I talk to. I wouldn't say this one's better than that one or this one's worse than that one. It's just different and it comes with a different set of rules and a different set of application kind of criteria, if you will. That's right, I like that. So this is a great option, exterior insulation on top of the zip sheathing, also a great option. Let's talk through one or two details. When you get to the bottom of the wall, Steve, if you sheath it with this, you might have some foam visible on the bottom side. I'd be worried that you might get some bugs that would burrow into that foam. You might get some air leakage through there. What's a good way to seal up the bottom there? So we have a number of options. My typical detail is we just simply apply a two by two to the outside. And what I found on that, that a lot of the framers like is that then they can sheet the house with single guys. Like we did one house and two guys sheet the house and they went in opposite directions around the house. Yep. Cause you have that extra set of hands. Um, I know with Jake, we've done a two by eight and just stuck it out the yep. inch and a half or inch and seven sixteenths. Let me clarify that. So instead of a two by six bottom plate, two by eight bottom plate, still rectified the same on the inside, that extra uh, inch and a half is sticking out. Yeah. Now you've got a ledge to yeah. drop your zip on yeah. the top. And, and we can get away with that with Jake because we're in Columbia, Missouri. If we were doing that in Massachusetts, we couldn't because we need the sheer value of attaching the panel uh, to the face of the bottom plate. Right. Right. You're not getting that same structural integrity that you get in this system or with the two by two. Right. Um, it's the same thing. So you have to have a, a double bottom plate or um, to solve for that. But, uh, you know, the other thing you talked about, um, go back to the climates. If you're climate tuning these, especially to cold climates, the beauty of our sheathing is that inside face is warmer than if it was just OSB That's or right. plywood. Yeah. So we've essentially moved what building scientists would call the condensing surface into a warmer portion of the wall system. So we have less chance of condensing on that wall system and, and basically the durability integrity of that wall increases exponentially. Yeah, so in other words, if we're in Minnesota and it's five degrees outside, your house is 70 degrees, it's humid in the house, it's winter time, you're worried about moisture coming into that cavity, migrating into that cavity, and hitting a cold condensing surface, this insulation is warming all that up. So it's a more, um, uh, it's a less worrisome assembly, less risky. let's say. Less, less risky. risky. There you yeah, go. Yeah, you, your, your risk go profile goes way down by using the zip bar sheathing. And the beauty is, is you have an R3, 6, 9, and 12 option. Yeah. So the colder you get in climates, you just increase the value of that R value to help warm that cavity because the delta across that R sheathing is going to be that much different. That's right. Now, back to that detail, though, where you've got that foam sticking uh, out at the bottom that's yep. exposed. Another option I was thinking of, Steve, was we could use a Sega tape like Sega Fentrum, yep. um, and we could tape from the sheathing horizontally over the foam and then down onto the concrete foundation and that would seal it yeah up. that would seal it up and it gives us that additional air seal yeah. at that because we have the dissimilar materials of going from the concrete foundation wall to the wood frame wall i love it good discussion steve guys if you're not currently following steve on instagram it's at steven basic architect builder on instagram and he's shooting videos every single week on his job sites, really, which are throughout the country these days, over on buildshownetwork.com. Go go follow Steve on his buildshownetwork.com videos. And I'll put a link in the description to our newsletter. Once a week, pardon me, twice a week, we'll send you out an email that will tell you what's new on the site, including all of Steve's and my videos and all of our contributors. Guys, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.